Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Red 3D movie thoughts. As I say in the review, I quite like the way they use the psychic abilities. I especially like the way that it actually helps them. That and the more humane approach of Anderson. That uh, the, the thing about, for example, that she saves them there early on where they'd prefer not to be seen by this game walking down and she sort of she she gets the name of the tenant from her head and then says the name to engender trust and then when they get in there she again uses it and she's like oh we can't I guess Dredd was talking about like knocking her out or something like that to keep her from raising an alarm and then Anderson is like, I can tell the psychic ability, there's a sleeping baby, we can't leave that one unattended. I, I think that was what was being said. And the, the, the thing about how, and, and from that, you know, just say what you're thinking. I won't raise an alarm, you know. Uh, and then the detail about how her husband was because that's she she says if if you get caught if i raise an alarm my husband might be killed by you and then anderson looks at them and quick flashback i just killed your husband and she of, of course doesn't say that and that's a really great you know it's it's that thing of everyone every Every person you encounter is related to someone else. There, there's, there might be people that they love out there. So the fact that she killed the guy, even if it was, I'm not sure it was quite self-defense. It was really more of an execution, but he had attacked them first. But still, the guy had a kid and a loving wife. And yeah, you know, that's... And, and then she, you know, she agrees, you know, I don't ever want to see you again. Okay, uh, we're in agreement, you know, and because she doesn't want to have to see her ever again. But, yeah, you know, it's that the, the harsh reality of that that does come in there. It's a really good, you know, it's, it's necessary to think about things like that. And again, as I said in the review, as far as I could tell from the research, the comic is partly about satire on the, you know, justice and the rule of law and such, You're asking these questions, making such points. One thing I did, the, the psychic powers I did wonder why exactly she was outsmarted by the black guy there when she was taken hostage by him. Because, yeah, I, I just couldn't quite figure out why. Now, my friend who I watched it with suggested that maybe she couldn't, excuse me, it, there were too many people, excuse me, and she was... She was focusing on the kids with guns and thus could not, like she was maybe also trying to read their minds or it was just that she can't read minds while also focusing intently on something else. I guess that could be. But I do find that the movie should have done a better job of 
explaining this. Just have a line or something about, oh, I, I can't do it if it's also, you know, I, I think the one time they talk about limitations to the psychic abilities is that she is worried that a helmet would, or uh, she knows that a helmet would slow down, and they, would disturb her psychic abilities. I think a bullet might disturb it more. That, that's a really good line. I, I also like when, basically the, the various times, I guess a total of three times where she goes into the suspect's mind, the, the African American guy who they came for at first, the drug raid, with, what was it, at first she is, yeah, at first they're standing like by a, I, I never quite understood what he was supposed to be showing her when he would show her something and she would be like afraid. It was just like she was standing and there was someone around the corner. Was it just like a general fear of death, fear of being caught and then killed? Something like that, I, I just didn't quite, I don't know, it was, it was a little too vague for me. But, but yeah, there, there's that one part where they're standing, I like how the, the first one was like, he imagines them having sex, and then she says, you're trying to intimidate me. No, if I was trying to intimidate you, I'd show you. So, he, he doesn't say it with words, but basically, I don't know, either he's just hot for her, or he's actually trying to like, he's, he's probably a very dominant male, so he's used to being able to get sex from the women that he wants to have sex with, basically. It, it doesn't exactly hurt that he's also part of this drug running operation. Now... Yeah, and then there's the interrogation, which, again, is where the psychic abilities of Anderson and Anderson herself really help out. Dredd wasn't getting anywhere with him, and so she goes and, yeah, enters his mind, and the, the they're basically playing chess against each other. The thing about how he's trying to use sex to... To, to win over her, and then she takes this, she, because she saw Mama doing, that. She, she saw the report about how Mama, what was it, feminized her former pimp, and yeah, the, use that to, that, that's a really good comeback. I must say, excuse me, and yeah, just the the whole way, and, and I also really like that, that they actually have this, I don't know, 20-something blonde girl who's not, she's not big and physically imposing, and they have her dominate this big black gang member that, uh, you know, in, in that interrogation scene. I thought that was a really great, I said, this is what I want from, you know, action movies. You can have, you know, see, taken, take notes. You can have women dominating men and, or, I didn't hear a single person. I watched in a pack theater. Not a single person was complaining. Not one. I, I heard approval from a largely male audience. And... I'm not sure if there was anything else with the psychic... Oh yeah, and I like the... the once the... corrupt judges uh, arrive, uh, and there's that... Uh, the female corrupt judge, and she's like, No, don't worry, I'm your backup, and she just shoots her. Really great because she can tell with the, the psychic part that yeah she's not. 
And that brings me nicely into the corrupt judges. I guess it was basically just a matter of time before the movie used that. And like I said in the review, the movie does a really good job of escalating. There's constantly a higher level of every every time you think that that was as tough as it was going to get or you're just impressed that they actually got out of the situation alive it escalates you know you that they bring in the minigun they bring in the corrupt judges and suddenly she has this ah crap i don't remember what it's called kill, kill switch i guess or some it, yeah anyway the the heart monitor thing anyway the corrupt judges yeah, it makes a lot of sense for them to bring that in. I thought that it was maybe going to be the black-clad ones who were also in the first movie and the comics. I'm not saying they were in for the first movie. The Special Judicial Squad, isn't that it? SJS. Who, in the comics and the first movie, regulate... Or they're basically there to make sure that the judges don't go nuts and kill a bunch of people. The, they're there to judge the judges. Because I read on uh, Wiki that apparently sometimes the SJS go corrupt. So that the... and that's an interesting idea because then who polices them? Who takes care of the... you know, if, if the... what's it called? If, if the failsafe fails, then what? I can understand why they didn't, because the movie is very self-contained, and if it would have been more that they had to explain, and it was probably, it, it makes sense that they didn't go further with that, in that but, but yeah, it was basically fine that it was for corrupt judges, I think that it was a little too fast the way they got dispatched. It seemed a bit easy considering there, there have been these various... There, there were several things that basically Dread only just got out. I mean, again, minigun. There were three miniguns trained towards them, and it was you know, shooting through walls. And still, they and, and it wasn't like they ah uh, they shot the gunman and thus it, it, it. No, they just barely survived. The only way they, I guess, they might not even have survived if they hadn't blown a hole through that wall. So. Yeah, it just seemed, you know, he beats up one of them just in a straight fight, and then he shoots another one, and finally the, yeah, the, and the other two are shot. Actually, that's, that's really cool. Four corrupt judges, and both, both Dredd and Anderson shoot two of them, and they, that they don't even have, like, Anderson only shooting one or something, but yeah. It just, it seemed a little too easy. I felt like that was a little disappointing. It was, it was basically the only disappointing thing action-wise, though, I'd say. I, I can't really think of anything else that, yeah. And that was also, as I, I mentioned in the review, there are just a few times where the machoism got too much. I really did not care for the final exchange between Dread and the final judge there with, you know, wait, wait, really? I'm gonna talk for like a full minute, maybe five minutes, just to talk about how you just said wait, blah, 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 and he shot. It was just so obvious. And I... <sighs> Say what you will about the Stallone film. That right there could easily have happened in the Stallone film. That was at least as cheesy 
and as obvious as several of the things in the Stallone film. Now, the... Going back to the miniguns, for one thing, I like that Mama herself got behind one of them. I, I really... You got the feeling that she was... She didn't really shy away from anything. There wasn't particularly anything where she just... She never laid down and died. And she never just said, well, you deal with it. It was just... She, you know, she... Yeah, she'd get in and get her hands... Excuse me, get her hands dirty herself, if need be. And then the fact that it shot a relatively small hole in the outer casing of the wall. And then Dread from there uses a high explosive to blow a big hole in the wall. And thus can get out and call for the backup, which then doesn't get anywhere. <laughs> Particularly, it was um, it. It made sense. I felt that the shell would maybe be slightly thinner on the inside because it's it's there to protect from attack from the outside. It's in case there is a, a war, and the uh, yeah the the block can defend against outside bombings or the like. I also like how they took over the control room to do it. And also the, just the taking over the control room. You didn't know immediately what was going on, but you deduced it. You know, a few seconds after they take over the control room, they have the computer guy who we later find out was the one with the eyes. That's just really awful. That's really nasty. And it, I've, from the start, you notice there's something with that dude's eyes, and then you find out why. I hate to... I'm not trying to be mean to that guy, but I thought that that was a woman when I first saw the shot of someone with their eyes in front of Mama. Yeah, sorry, dude. It's the hair! You, you, get a haircut! And then it won't happen again. I hope. And the, yeah, and yes, not long after he's using the thing to, yeah, the, the control room. And anyway, it's, yeah, the, the, that they, they got a hole through the shell. I guess that didn't particularly lead to anything, considering that they... I don't know, maybe it was just supposed to be this further... unpleasantness, that they, they thought they could get backup in, and then the backup is just waiting in front of the building, because Mama... Yeah, I guess it, it helped to further show that Mama is prepared for the various situations. I also really love, just sort of forget her line before the corrupt cop, the corrupt judges arrive. What are we gonna do against someone like him? Call 911. Perfect. And, and when the non-corrupt judges arrive and, and call and they're like, oh, no, we're, we're having a, an exercise in here, you can't come in. Your exercise is over. We're coming in, you know, and then up oh, there's a software malfunction. And through that, you see her with this nasty looking, slightly exotic looking knife, which she's like caressing his navel with. And it just, you can tell any moment if she really, like, wants to, she's gonna cut him open, just like nothing, like, like she was cleaning her nails or something, and it's not, she's not gonna think twice about it, and that's why he puts on the act, you know, 
And I also like that he was released by Anderson there at the end. You know, said, letting a Pope go is not just, uh, what was it, a failing, it doesn't just fail you, it's a, it's, it's a crime. Oh, well, I already failed when I lost my weapon earlier, so it's fine. And, and he's, he's not just a criminal, he's also a victim. And that, again, is a really important point to make. I also really liked her there at the end with, you know, I, I know I failed, and she just hands him the badge, and he's like, wow, she really knows her cop cliches. I guess I better let her to come back in. Now, I, I quite like that he changed his mind. At the beginning of the film, he's like three points below. What is she doing in a uniform? And then at the end, it's like, she might have not, she might not have passed the tests we have, but there are things that are on that test. There were things that, because there were things that Dredd didn't deal with. He didn't think to get in to, to one of these, one of the areas, you know, she, she did have the advantage of using psychic powers, but still, there were various situations where she actually solved the problem that he seemingly couldn't, or at least he didn't before she did, so it, she has something to bring to it, and she's quite capable as well. Now, the... I liked that, you know, the, they of course maintained the thing of the, the DNA encoding on the guns, which again, as far as I understand, is not from the first movie, it's actually from the comics originally. And that it was sort of, they don't make a big deal out of it at first. It's just you see Dredd pick up his gun and it says, you know, checking DNA ID confirmed or something like that. And okay, you don't really think about it for a while. And then when, you know, they're, I guess near the end, when Anderson is about to be shot by the the guy, the African American, and and he you know he's just before he readies the gun and tries to use it, and he's like any last words, bitch. That's funny. I was about to ask you the same thing, bitch. And he tries to fire it and it blows up his hand. That's really great. Now. It was a cool sort of the um, it was a cool way to end the hostage negotiation with this guy's head basically I guess on fire something like that and I get that he did literally is again it's one of those cheesy moments where he you think that he's calling the dude hot shot but actually he's telling his gun hot shot, you know, I guess fire at the, is it like a heat seeker kind of thing? Or maybe it's just that he, maybe he was aiming and the shot is just like, not a regular bullet, but like a kind of, yeah, just a really heated projectile or something. But yeah, I didn't completely understand why necessarily the perp couldn't shoot her. I don't know. Maybe the heated shot more slowly killed him, so it wasn't like a sudden thing where if he had been shot by a regular, just a regular bullet, he would have had time to pull the trigger or something. I don't know. Maybe it was just the surprise. Hot shot? Yeah, hot shot. And then he shoots. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, like I said, it was pretty cool. Now... Now... 
It was also quite brutal when they ran over that guy at the beginning in the car chase. I also liked how that was, that, that they again, they really got, which is something I felt was lacking in the, in the Stallone one. They really made a point of executions are not just, you know, just because there's a crime being committed doesn't mean that the perps get executed. He did not kill the people in that car before they showed that they did not care about preserving other people's life. You know, so... Now... It was a decent enough explanation, the thing about why Mama was so desperate to keep the African American from leaving the building that it would reveal her drug running and and the fact that she was producing the drugs right there in the building that that would kind of she could handle minor tussles with the law it was it wasn't a big deal that several of of the of her users in the building are killed, but the fact that the African American was there and that he was going to be taken back to Central for questioning, that right there meant that they needed to die, and so come to think of it, if she had really. She basically could have just had someone snipe him instead of making all this effort to... But, I don't know, maybe she didn't know about Dredd's career and his skills, I suppose. And again, of course, it's one of those things where otherwise there wouldn't be a movie. I really like the, the th kill switch, or whatever you call one of those things where it's set to her heartbeat, Mama's heartbeat, and it's from stories 50 and up. So the, the top 50 of the 100, and then he shoots her in a way that isn't going to kill her instantly just to debilitate her so she can't fight back and then he gives her a hit and throws her over and the, the line of that do you think that let, let's see if it can um, if, if the signal can go that far if it can go from the bottom the ground floor to the 50th floor and we see at the end that of course it cannot and it's a nice bit of poetic justice, because earlier in the movie, to make an example out of these, what's it called, these dealers from this other gang, she had them skinned and thrown over whilst on slow-mo, and so she is also thrown over while on slow-mo. And I think... I like the it's it's like I said in the review, it's it's kind of it's it's quite beautiful when she is falling, and really right up until the moment where her face smushes against the lens and then blood pours out, covering the lens, right up until that moment, it is beautiful and glorious. This falling, this experience of falling. And it's it's a real rush, you know. And I, I felt like the they did a really good job of that, of making slow mo the only escape. And of course, it's an illegal escape from the horrors of living in this world and this time. I thought that the 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 gang war part of the backstory made a lot of sense. It. 
I believe that Mama could be that ruthless and that effective because what you see her do in the movie, she's clearly quite tactical. And by the way, once the movie is like almost over and the corrupt judges have entered the... If she has corrupt judges on her side, yeah, she could definitely win a gang war. That is very much going to tip the odds in her favor. Another thing about the corrupt judges that I didn't care that much for, the dialogue with the explanation for you. Basically, we didn't get so much of an explanation for why they were corrupt. It was just, yeah, these macho exchanges. It's just, oh, it's a meat grinder and put in the meat and we, we just turn the handle and it's just this kind of meaningless macho drill. You know, it doesn't really do anything. I just, I didn't want to sympathize with them, but I would have liked especially considering how well the rest of the movie did at that, if there had just been some sort of real explanation. Like, if there had been some kind of... I don't know, if, let's say one of the judges had made just one mistake, and if it had been spotted, if... It, if um, if Central had known about it, he would have been demoted, and he would have lost his... He would not have gotten very much pay, maybe none at all, and he he has a family to support. It wouldn't have made it right, but it would have made sense. It would have just been more... I just feel like they were just completely throwaway characters, which... They're judges! You want it to matter. You want it to really... I mean, I... In a week, I'm going to remember the dork who I at first mistook for a woman with the eyes who got the navel knife treatment, but I'm not going to remember these judges because they were just boss enemies, you know, there was nothing to them, no, no real personality, they were just your average corrupt police, law enforcement types from action flicks, you know, we've, we've seen the, that archetype so many times and they didn't do anything new with it. Hmm. That might more or less cover it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.